This is the story of a little girl, a big battle, and a decision almost eight years ago that saved a young life. Meet Frances. She's a pretty normal seven-year-old Kiwi kid. She loves animals. Horse, flamingo, cat. Lady Gaga. Yeah, bad romance. And is very clear on her favourite foods. Sweet is ice cream and um, healthy is corn cake. Frances has a nice big family. She's close to big sister Beatrice. She likes to play with dolls and... She usually wants me to play with her and she likes the same things basically that I do except for favourite colours. And her two big brothers. She's involved in her schoolwork. Our topic is uh, um, those people that do dot art. Frances loves clothes, especially pink ones. Look at this. Ooh, what do you think those are? Ooh. What do you think? Are they pink? Let's have a look. And other girly things. Frances, do you like this dress? Oh, yes. And this one's also very cheap. She would look beautiful in that dress. In this one? Yeah. A happy, joyful little child. But Frances has been through more than most of us could imagine. She'd always been a bouncy, larger-than-life child, but a couple of months before the diagnosis, she'd started taking herself off to bed quite early. At age four, this little Auckland girl was diagnosed with neuroblastoma stage four. It's a childhood cancer with a 10 to 20 percent chance of survival. Her family was told to expect the worst. Absolutely shattering. Um, the oncologist said to us and to the family that this is the hardest thing you'll ever have to deal with and definitely it was true. Um, just devastating for the family, for the other children, in every way. It's as if your whole system shuts down because the news is so shocking um, and nothing that you've ever done before in life can prepare you for such a horrific news. Um, not only that your child or a child has cancer, but that they're not expected to survive. Christina says the medics gave them some unimaginable choices. At one of the very early meetings with the oncologist, one of the, the options put forward was to take Frances home to let her die. But the family felt that they didn't want to look back and think, what if I tried? If, if, you, if you tried and you failed, at least you've done your best. So Frances and her family began the long, hard battle. The little girl and her mum were in and out of Auckland Starship Children's Hospital for six long months. What was that one where there was, I went into it like a big circle? So? That's an MRI, which yeah. is a giant magnet which takes pictures of your insides. You think you'll never smile in life again, but you do. There was surgery to remove the mass from her abdomen, six cycles of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Were you scared? Mm. No. You, you, we're happy with what the doctors were doing to help you get better? Yeah. Frances has a permanent reminder of those long months of treatment. The string of beads child cancer patients gather, one bead for every treatment or milestone. I know that these ones mean that she stayed overnight. Lots of her big ones mean like finishing treatments and big things like scan, like really big scans and stuff. The treatment took a toll on the whole family. Sad, hard to believe, and just, I want it to be fine and better. The chemotherapy involved the use of a number of drugs which Christina says are potentially lethal to try and kill any remaining cancer cells. The problem with that is those cancer-killing drugs can also damage the patient. But then her family remembered something vital. They had had Frances's cord blood collected at her birth. They were one of the early families to use the service when Cord Bank was established here in New Zealand in 2002. It was stored at Cord Bank in Auckland and doctors were enthusiastic about using it to help Frances fight the cancer. Frances was very, very sick at that stage. She was on morphine. She became the first child to have her cord blood reinfused in New Zealand and the family didn't have to wait long to see results. It takes a while before you know if they're really going to make it, but probably within 
a week or so, you could say that she'd reached a turning point that, you know, she was going to come through. There haven't been very many neuroblastoma stage four children in New Zealand who have survived. She has survived and she's defied the medical predictions and really the only thing that's different in her treatment compared to the other children who've died is the cord blood and privately I've heard that medical staff consider Francis to be a miracle. I remember going out of the hospital like um, and some, the, some of the nurses were like throwing petals. The family is certain having Francis's cord blood collected and stored played a vital part in her recovery. It was obviously completely the right decision. Um, it's a little bit like a fire insurance policy on your house. It's very, very unlikely that your house would ever burn down, but you wouldn't quibble about paying for that. And Christina says the future holds all sorts of hope. And as scientific developments come along, there could be all sorts of unforeseen uses. Having that cord blood really was a ray of light. Francis is now technically in remission, a welcome diagnosis that the family thought might never come. Happy and excited that now we could do like real stuff together instead of having her have to go into hospital. And Francis herself sums it all up in a heartbreakingly simple way. I was happy that I didn't die and I could stay with my family. We were very happy about that too. Yeah. Yeah. If I died, you would just have like a little time with me and then, mm. yeah. That would be very, very sad. Yeah.